We're starting the second quarter of the year 2022. None of you will die yeah. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Your organs within you will not collapse you yeah. in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Matthew 14, we read from verse 23, or 22 to 33. 22 to 33. There shall be a lifting up. Yeah. Mm. And straightway, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was not in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch, please underline the word fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is his spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spoke unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind on the line, the word the wind boisterous. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sing. He cried, Say, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and called him and said to him, O thou of little faith, wherefore did thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. Everlasting Father, I want again, we want to bless you. The first Sunday of the month, you brought us from far and near by faith to come into your presence to reference you, worship you. Scripture says, The entrance of your word give light and give understanding unto the simple. With all humility of hearts and spirit, we ask, O Lord, that your spirit. Give us intervention of your word. Even as many who are dreadful of taking this giant step to their future, Lord, I pray tonight that, Lord, you encourage their faith. Amen. You steer up their faith. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. The fear of the unknown that have trapped them in their mind, I pray that fear will give way to faith in Jesus' name. Amen. The ability to see beyond the naked eye. Lord, grant unto us in the name of Jesus. Amen. That all your power, all the purpose of our existence shall come to manifestation. Amen. Thank you, righteous God. We give you thanks and praises. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen and amen. So from where we took our test from, we understood that uh, after Jesus Christ had fed thousands with uh, five uh, loaves of bread and uh, two fishes. And they had a law, they had a law that they had left, left over. The great miracle. And now he decided to let them go away. He wanted to stay back a little bit and take time to, to recuperate, to regroup himself, to revitalize himself, to re energize himself in prayer. So he went to a secluded place and he told his disciples to give him some time. He left them in the boat while he went to pray. You know, now the calendar, the day of the Jews start from what time? 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. So methodologically, he grouped the night into three sections. From 6 p.m. to 9, which is the first one, the first watch. From 9 to 12, which is the midnight, the second watch. The third watch is from midnight to 3. And the fourth watch is from 3 p.m. or 3 a.m. now to 6 a.m. Now, for those of you who have experienced what we call night watch, or perhaps who have 
no night duty or night shift. You understand that this night work is the most crucial time in the night. You can be very agile from 6 p.m. to 9 to midnight to 3 a.m. But when you get to 3 a.m. to 6 a.m., no matter how strong your coffee is, you, your body begins to tell you. <laughs> Any witness in the house? Yes, sir, from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m., your body begins to call on you, tell on you, demand some things on you. You're getting tired. That is the essence. So the apostles have been in the boat all from 6 to 3 a.m. They were watching. They were waiting. They were getting tired. While they were dozing up, they saw something coming. Walking on the water. And they said, at last, wow, this is, this is a ghost. This, is, this, this, this could not be... <laughs> Their mind could not take it because already they were weak, both in the body and in the spirit. They were weak. They could not wrap their mind around that this is Jesus Christ walking on the water. So they thought to themselves, this is no other person but a ghost. That Jesus Christ said, Alas, no, 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 no. Don't be, don't be scared. Don't, don't be worried. It's me. It's me. How many of us in the journey of life in the journey of life, we get to a point where we become so tired, we become so weak, both spiritually and even naturally. We become weak of fasting, we become weak of waiting, we become weak of believing and trusting God. But we have trusted and trusted and trusted, and all we could see is that nothing is changing in our mind. So we become tired. And at this point, Apostle, Apostle, Apostle Peter said unto him, Master, if it is you, bid me to come. Ask me to come and walk on the water. What a bold giant faith, right? Yeah. What a bold one. You want to walk on water? Say, oh, the master said, okay, come and walk on the water. He's stepping out of the boat. And he began to walk on the water. Because you come here today means you have faith. Because you are sitting down, you are home watching and listening to me, you have faith. But that faith is, does not end there. The faith you have in a corresponding action, what you are studying, what you are hearing, you have to embrace it and walk with it, move with it, react to it. So Apostle Peter heard the word, he reacted to it. But guess what? When he considered, I said you should underline the word boisterous wind. The wind in that scripture connotes trouble. It represents trouble. It represents the cares of the world, the worries of the world, the challenges of the world, the needs, the wants. Why he remained focused on the master? He was walking on the challenges of life when he focused on Jesus Christ. But the moment he began to consider the boisterous wind, the noises of the world, what they say, what they do, when he began to consider it, he lost focus on the master. All what he could perceive and hear now is the voice of the devil. God, fear is not a synonym to faith. It is a direct opposite word to faith. Faith is believing in what you don't see. Yes, sir. Fear is re reacting to what you see, what you hear, what you feel, what you taste. It's too hot. Who told you it's hot? It's your body. It smells bad. Who told you it smells bad? It's your senses. So that's what fear does. But faith is you closing your mouth, your nose, your ear to what your surroundings are dictating to you. And you're focusing on the plan, the purposes, the dreams, the desire, the will of God. Am I talking to somebody? You are looking at me and I'm from a, an alien or from a different world. Praise the Lord. 
So Peter, Peter, Peter considered and he began to sink. He began to sink. And the master, Mr. Kenos, they reached out unto him. I didn't call you to sink. I call you to walk on the water. Christ has not called you into barrenness, into unfortunate, into lack, into poverty, into struggling. The scripture says in Romans 8 1, now therefore, there is no condemnation to those who are in the Lord. Amen. Can we share the grace and go home? You are not responding. No condemnation, no limitation, no cause against those who are in the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you in the Lord? Am I talking to somebody? Because before Christ can lift you up, you must be in him. Ah. Before he can lift you up, you must, be, you must know him. You must believe in him. You must believe that he is. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. Say, no one go unto the Father said, those who believe that he is, who is he is, the rewarder of those who diligently seek. Are you seeking God? Are you passionate about God and about his kingdom? So he will lift you up. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. He has not called you into troubles of life. Peter was distracted and he began to sink. Was that the will of God for him? No. He doubted. He doubted. He disobeyed God. He disobeyed Jesus. And he began to sink. To him, when I said, but master, why are you allowing me to sink? No, it wasn't the master. Master has not changed his position to him. And he bid him come. He said, come. And when he obeyed, he walked on the water. Now 55, verse 22. Say, cast all your burdens, anxiety, your fear, your doubt, your worriness unto me. For I, Jehovah, will sustain you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is it your Bible? Are you, have you casted it unto him? Or are you carrying the worriness? Are you carrying it yourself? The fear, the doubt, the unbelief, the disbelief. Are you carrying by yourself? It's too heavy for you to carry, brothers and sisters. So this month, God is saying unto you as a church, let me carry it for you. Amen. Let me carry it for you. If only you allow him to carry it for you, your head will be lifted up. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Your head will be lifted up. Your head will be lifted up. When Peter reached up his hand unto the master, guess what? He saved him. It wasn't the master who reached out unto him. It was him who reached out unto the master. And God says, the Lord will save you. Amen. It is not the will of the Lord that we all perish. His will is for us to repent of our sins so that we all can be saved. See, from all of us, we want that you are the only because that we say that believe you will not do what? They will not do what they will have what? Everlasting. Once you trust in God, you can't perish. He loves you so much, he allows you to die for you. Christ has secured a place for us in the kingdom of his father. You understand it? That's your post. That's your identity in God. Your eternity, oh no. Our eternity collected is secure. Christ is not coming to die again. He died once for all. Our eternity is secure by the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. However, do away with your fear, your doubt, your unbelief. Do away with it. Do away with it. And the Lord will promise in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us know that if you want to do a praise. Like I said before, trouble, trouble is a state or condition of distress. Trouble is a state or condition of distress, annoyance or difficulty. The quality or state of being troubled, especially mentally. When you are troubled mentally, your body reacts to it. When you are troubled mentally, your body, no matter how strong you are physically, your body reacts to it. Your demeanor changes, your countenance changes, because you are troubled mentally. 
So we can see friends or family member around us, or what we need just to look at them and say, ah, no, something is wrong with that brother. No, it's a mental issue, but the body reacts to it. Praise the Lord. There is a natural tendency to fear. When trouble and challenges services in our lives, in our life's journey, but Christians must resolve, please turn it down, Christians must resolve to have faith in God, who is more than able to deliver. The tendency for us to be afraid when troubles and challenges come to our life is there. But as a believer, a Christian, you must resolve in your spirit to do what? To have faith in God, who is more than able. Ephesians 3, 20 say, to, uh, to him who is able ah, to do exceedingly beyond what we think or say by his power that is in us. God is more than able. He's not coming to appear to you when you are troubled alone. Even when you are not troubled, he's there with you. He will be with us always until the end, he said unto us. Hallelujah. Amen. Fear is an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous and likely to cause pain or a threat. Say that again. Fear is an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous likely to cause pain or to cause a threat to us. Fear is a mind killer. And a little death that brings total obliteration. A mind killer. It kills our spirit. Fear. It numbs our senses. It destroys our ability. Fear. The word fear in acronym simply means false evidence appearing to be real. It throw it out to you in your mind. It's all in the mind. As great as the mind, so it's fear in the mind. So it throw it to you in your mind. When you see fear, you, you, you exchange what is real to, 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 to that fear. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord and Jesus. Fear is an illusion. Something we fabricate, we phantom in our own mind and pretend it to be real. Fear is an illusion. It's like a mirage. It's an illusion. It, it doesn't exist. Fear does not exist. Just as you can't, you can't describe darkness. No one can describe darkness. Darkness is simply the absence of light. So in other words, where you have light, there is no darkness. Darkness is not existing where there is light. The absence of light is darkness. When you have faith, there is no fear. The reason why you entertain fear is because you don't have faith. It's an illusion. If I eat this, I will sick. It's in your mind. Tell him to go to swimming pool, he will be shivering like, 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 you know, like he's dead in his chest. <laughs> and all is in the mind. All is in the mind. That's why fear, fear does. Fear cripples our mind, it, it cripples our strength. I, I, I'm dreading so much on that because many of us are trapped in the idea of, I, I can't do that. I'm afraid to do that. If I knew that something bad will happen, who told you, for God's sake? You have been with me all this time, and you still don't know that I come from my father, that was Jesus Christ, and unto, 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 unto Timothy, uh, no, unto, unto Thomas, the thousand Thomas. Have I been with you all this while the book of John chapter, John chapter 14, from verse 6 to 8? 
Say, have I been with you all day? And you don't still know where I'm going, where I come from. You don't know my father. And I've been with you three and a half years. Because they were afraid of losing him. Say, where well, fear can't, what fear can do? I dare you, brother and sister, do the unthinkable. Challenge yourself. Christ is with you. And with him you can do all things. Oh, no. I, 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 was, I, was, I was in a meeting yesterday, and a young lady came out. Very vibrant lady. She was diagnosed with lupus at the age of 15. From 140 pounds, she lost weight to become 60. She lost all her hair. And she couldn't eat, she couldn't drink, she couldn't walk by herself. Family were not even coming back to see her in the hospital because they all lost her. And he said to her, said, he, she was very young when she had accepted Jesus Christ, our Lord and personal Savior. And she just said to her, I said, but I believe in this Lord. Why should God allow this to happen to me? Everything I know has been, I was born and raised in Christian home, everything. She said, but why is there any God? So at the stage she began to resent God and the word of God, thinking, well, if God is there, say, I don't believe this God should allow things like this to happen to me. We've all been there, right? Then, the scripture comes to her mind. I say, I have to pray by five. By a shrine, we have been made whole. So each time he's having doubt and fear concerning God, the word of God, and Jesus Christ, what he had did for her, the scripture will come back to her again. So at the end of all the doubt, you say, okay, well, the Bible says, by your strife, I'll be made whole. If you're sliding down there, then one pastor came in, or those pastors go to the hospital to visit, and came in there one day, and looked at her, like I still where she was lying down. And went to her, and lay hands on her, and I prayed for her. So at that point, she, she responded. She, now, she managed to Mutter some words, you know, but why does God allow this to happen to me? So the man of God has said, Do you believe? He said, Yeah, I believe. I was born and raised as a Christian. I was a vibrant church goer, choir in the church, do everything. Why? And the man said, I give you a scripture. Hold on to it. Guess what scripture? By his strife, you are made whole. He said, Pastor, I know this word. <laughs> so I know this word. I've been saying all that. Though I question, but every day I'm saying, by his strife, I made whole. So the man lay and know her again and pray at the man left. Two days later. practically walking into her room, lay hands on her heart, and let her know, by my strife, you are made whole. By my strife, you are made whole. Can I tell you that story? When, when, when she shouted, the nurses, they, they, they couldn't believe that she was the one who was shouting. She told she was still weak, but her voice was restored. Yeah. After that, the air is not coming. She said, well, but then she began to sing. Yeah. Into sing. She left the hospital two weeks later. Oh, wow. Fully recovered. Yeah. Fully recovered. I'm going to ask her to come here one of these days. She's a Spanish lady, all the way from Bronx. She said, I will go anywhere to share my testimony yeah. for those that my testimony will help. Mm. Brothers and sisters, listen, it, the perfect work of Calvary has resolved every issue we are going through. Yeah. 
In the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse uh, 15, verse 13, there is no temptation known to man that will ever come your way except the one that God himself has allowed. If he allows it, he has already provided a way out of it. There is nothing you are going through. Yet, am I screaming? Should I yell? There is nothing you've been through or you are going through or that is coming your way that God is not aware of it. Nothing. Job, our senior brother in faith, he said, the thing that I fear most, the book of Job chapter 3 verse 29, said the fear, the thing that I fear most had happened. Though we, God called him a righteous man, but this man had faith. He had, he, had, he had fear. Are you together? So you could be a pastor, a deacon, a deaconess, a church, whatever, but you are still afraid of the devil. Yo, the thing that I feared most, how can a righteous man fear things? He's afraid of his children committing sin. He's afraid of his children can you imagine? So every night before his sleep, he will have to sacrifice to appease God on behalf of the children every day of his life. And though he was considered a righteous man. Are you like Job? Are we like Job? Yes, we trust God in this area. But in this area, uh, <laughs> Pastor, my faith did not go to that level. You don't have faith at all. So if you have as little as a mustard seed faith, you command the mountain. What mountain are you carrying? What mountain is obscuring you? Your vision, your dream, your aspiration, your goal. What mountain are you seeing? Do you have faith? The faith says, command the mountain. Come, speak to the mountain. Speak to the challenges. Be bold enough to speak to it. Ye devil, come out of here. The greatest commission in the book of Matthew 28 from 16 through 20. He said, he said, go ye into the world, preaching the good news and baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And he said, casting out the devil. Are you sleeping? You're not responding. The devil is the author of fear. He gives you authority to cast that. Not even the fear now. Fear is the symptom. The devil is the author. He said, cast out the devil, he said. You can't drink this. You can't heal this. And you forbid this. In your family, they don't do this. Who told you? We all came from Adam and Eve. Have you forgotten? And when God created the devil, they were created, were created and they were good. And he said, have authority over them. Yeah. They were created for you. The land, the ocean, the sea, the everything you can think of were created for us. Amen. Take authority, brothers and sisters. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has not given us the spirit of fear. First Timothy 1 7. We are given us the spirit of what? Sound mind to process life, journey of life. To process your career, your marriage, your children, your husband, your wife. Process it, sad mind. I can do all this through Christ who stretches me. I am a winner. I'm victorious. I'm blessed. I'm not caused. Declare it, sad mind. Don't question everything. They hate me. They don't want me. They don't. Please keep quiet. Do you love yourself? Do you love yourself? Then show it to the world. No condemnation against you. Yeah. Who can condemn who God has not condemned? Yeah. Who, can, who can judge who God is ever set free? No demon. Yeah. It's only a sister in our mind. You don't give the spirit of fear or intimidation by the devil. When you have a dream in the night, oh, oh, hey, Pastor, I see who the two horns. Who told you the devil is with two horns? It's an illusion. It's in our mind. 
Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Faith means the complete trust or confidence in someone or in something. In this, in this context, it's about trusting in God. Trusting in God. The complete trust or having confidence in our living God. Faith is taking the first step even when you don't see the whole staircase. Faith is taking the first step. Even when you can't even see the end of the staircase, you just take it. I don't know how long, but I'm taking it. That's faith. You don't see that at the lower edge of the mountain because the old mountain is too high. Who told you? People are there. Take a step. Faith is to believe what you do not see. Faith is in the spiritual realm, not in the physical. If you can see, you don't believe. Because you see already. You don't have faith if you see it. But faith is in the unseen realm, the spiritual realm. Faith is to know the belief that God will do what you want. I take it again. Faith is not the belief that God will do what you want. It is the belief that God will do what is right. Amen. And if what is right is not good for you, it is still faith to believe that it comes from God. Amen. It is not faith that everything you believe out. Oh yes, that, 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 that you are a woman of faith. It doesn't work that way. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Doubt is a feeling of uncertainty, doubt, or lack of confidence and conviction, doubt. Apostle Peter doubted the word of God. You know how he doubted Jesus Christ. And the result shame. When he had faith, the word, when he doubted, he began to sink. Many of us are doubting. We are in that stage in our life that we doubt everything. It's good to be critical in life. It's good to be critical. It's good. But when it comes to the things of God, brother and sister, you pack all your critical analysis. Pack it and bury it. Because it doesn't work. Jesus Christ appeared to the apostles after his, his resurrection. And the doubting Thomas was not there. So when he came, his, his other apostles said, Oh, wow, you missed. Our master came here. Appeared to me. They said, No, 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 no. He came? No way. He said, I have to see him so I can feel where the, 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 the nail entered his hand and, and his side where the sword appeared before I would believe. He lacked faith. He lacked faith. Then Jesus appeared again. And Jesus said, I believe. And Peter said, Ah, ah, ah. Thomas. So you are believing because you see me. He said, Blessed are those that I have not seen. But they believe. Amen. I know I'm taking your time, right? <laughs> Blessed are those. Blessed are you when you don't see what you believe. Yes, you, you can't define God. Can I say that again? No one can define God or the doings of God or the characters of God. We know in fact everything you have heard so far about God is just in the mind of every individual, including the theologians. It is what comes out of their mind. No human being can define God. So if God comes through waves today, he might come through rain tomorrow. You can't say because he came through waves today, I, I, we appear through which you can No one can define God. No one can determine God and his doings. And this is why we keep on coming to his presence on a daily basis, seeking for his mercy. Amen. You can't say, I fasted today, tomorrow I'm not going to fast. Oh, I have prayed today, and tomorrow I'm not going to fast. No, it does not work. If anybody told you that, what the person is lying. The steadfast love of the Lord. Yes, his message shall come to an end. Is 
into this now? They are new every morning. New every morning. Well, is that the night so The mercies of God are new every morning. And that is why when you wake up in the morning, you have to go to him. Lord, I need your mercy today. You can't say, yesterday I had I received mercy from God. And today I don't need mercy. No, they are new every morning. Every evening. Every afternoon. They are new. That's your God. And you are living by the mercies of God. And because you are at his mercy, you need to keep on approaching him on a daily basis. Have mercy on me, Lord. Have mercy on me. I'm your young daughter. I'm your young son. Have mercy on me. I need my children. I need financial breakthrough. I need healing in my body. Have mercy on me. On a daily basis. Not allow the devil to cage you. To tell you you don't need to fast. You don't need to pray. Pray always. Until something happens in your life. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse, verse 17. Pray for ceasing without stopping. Let me stop there because of our time. We continue there next week by God's grace. Pray at all times. My God, your God, our God will lift your head up. In the name of Jesus Christ. The hand of God that lifted up Peter. That hand is coming upon somebody. In the name of Jesus. Even when Peter thought he was sinking. But God reached out unto him and delivered him. Maybe you are taught to yourself that you are sinking. Your business is not doing well. Or it's not going to do well. You can't achieve your goals or your dreams or your desire. Your husband is not coming. You are not giving birth to your children. Your wife is not coming. I come to announce you. The hand of Jesus that raised up even Peter from that sinking water. That hand lifts you up in the name of Jesus. Stand on your face. Can I your hand? Who told you your womb is closed? Who told you you are beautiful for nothing? Who told you you're not going to get your husband? Who told you you're not going to rock your own baby? Who told you you can't receive that scholarship? The devil is a liar. I announce to you this morning or this afternoon at this time, maybe the God of heaven and earth who brought you to present this day, he will lift your head off. In the name of Jesus, take a moment and pray unto the Lord. Pray unto the Lord that the Lord lift you up and meet you at the point of your need. Open your mouth and talk to God. Open your mouth and talk to God. Has God to lift your head up? Has God to lift your head up? Above and beyond all your enemy. Has God to lift your head up? In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, lift our heads up in this season, in this time. At your we pray for your house strength and to rescue us from the dungeon where the devil has kept your children. Lord, lift them up. Break the yoke of the enemy. Break the ranks of the devil. Let there be a physical manifestation of your presence and of your glory. In this household of faith, in the month of April, the over arise. You are the one who died. Bible said the last enemy to be defeated and conquered is that death. You came, you killed them. You swallowed them in victory. You resurrected the third day. And you say, all power will be given unto you on earth and in heaven. And you have given all that authority to trample down over principalities and power. In your name we command everything. Working against us to make it over to our favor. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It's your month of lifting up. The Lord will lift you up. The Lord will lift you up. The Lord will lift you up. Your life shall be for testimony. You shall be for sign. The Lord will grant this month with testimony. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. In Jesus' name we pray.